Today's video is sponsored by Book of the Month. Hello friends! Today I will be sharing with you my very long list of books that I am dying to get to. You get it? Cause like, I want to read all these before I die. Okay, you, you get it, okay. friends and welcome to my existential crisis. Recently I came across this type of a video. I've seen Brits from Basically Brits, I've seen the book Leos, and I've also seen Emma from Emmy's channel do this topic and the topic is what books do you want to read before you die? And I'm gonna be honest with you, it never occurred to me but I'm actually not going to get to read every single book I want to before I die. There's just too many good books. I'm not bummed out about death, I'm bummed out about the fact that I can't read all the books. So today I thought I would try my hand at this concept and basically I'm just telling you all of the books I 100% really want to read before I die. Is it bleak? Yes. But like it's also my channel so I'm sure it's expected, you know? But before we get into the very long list of books that I would like to read before I kick the bucket, I would like to thank today's sponsor which is Book of the Month. Speaking of dying, do you know what I'm dying to do right Right now, read my book of the month selection. Book of the month is a fast growing online book subscription service for book lovers everywhere. Every single month, their team of highly selective readers and reviewers picks a selection of books for you to choose from at home. They choose beloved authors as well as new and emerging authors and curate their selection so that you can pick which book or books you would like to be delivered to your door once a month. And let me tell you besties, you never get tired of seeing that iconic blue box and this month's picks, you guys, they are so good. The first book is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez with this stunning, beautiful cover. She's got a point, she's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the most. Like this book is absolutely beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Next up is Breathless, and this is by Amy McClock, and this is a thriller. And we love a good thriller in this house. Next up, we have one of my most highly anticipated books of the year, and this is by Nina LaCour, who is one of my favorite authors of all time. You guys, I cannot even tell you how much I love Book of the Month, like right now specifically, they really nailed it. Anyways, this is Yerba Buena, and this is by Nina LaCour. The next book here is Take My Hand, and this is by Dolan Perkins Valdez. You guys, next up is Holly Black's new adult fantasy. I screamed when I opened this. I don't know what to tell you. This one is, this one has my whole heart too. So the next one is Book of Night and this is of course by Holly Black and it's an adult fantasy. The back says even your shadow can be stolen. <laughs> next up, let me get it together. Um, we have another book that I have been really, really excited and anticipating, and that is Darling Girl, and this is by Liz McClowski. You guys, this is a Peter Pan retelling. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm obsessed with Peter Pan. And this is the retelling, and like, I just, I, I can't even. I'm so excited for this. Like, I cannot even tell you. And then finally, we have The Hacienda, and this is by Isabel Canas. And here's the hard part of the video, besties. This is the part where I like to tell you my overall number one pick out of the selection, which at times can be pretty hard because there's always at least two books that I want. But this time, don't make me pick. Like, these three are all my number one picks. I cannot choose between these three books. Book of the Month actually has an option where you can do add-on books, and so you can actually add more books to your box, I would do an add-on. And if you are new to Book of the Month, you can actually use my code, which is just my name, Alexandra, and you can get your very first book box for only $9.99. The regular price for this one, $26. How much is the Holly Black one? The Holly Black one is $28. Like, I have no idea how they can do it, but I am in awe of Book of the Month. Like, I love them so much. So if you are new to them, highly recommend using my code, highly recommend getting the first book box for only $9.99. And also, I just highly recommend Book of the Month. I think that's everything though, you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to the video of books I'm dying to read before I kick the bucket. Okay, so let's get started. Just a little bit of a disclaimer, most of these books that are on this list, I've chosen for very specific reasons. And those reasons usually are the fact that they are referenced quite a bit in pop culture, or they are books that are classics that I've just heard like incredible things about. So if you see a theme, you are correct. Let's go ahead and start off this very bleak topic 
with Bleak House, and this is by Charles Dickens. This is a book that I have talked about so much on my channel. This is a book that I put on 22 books that I wanna read this year. This is a book that I put on my other list, I think like 20 books I wanna read in 2020. It's a book that I've talked about so much because I am desperate to read it, but also... When he looks at me, and I look at him, and he looks at me. I mean, that could scare the pants off of anyone, you know? Keep your pants on. That is such a weird phrase. Have you ever thought about that before? Anyways, okay. This is a book that I've wanted to read ever since seeing a girl do like a presentation on this book in my senior thesis class, I think back like for undergrad. And she charmed me, she really did. Well, actually I didn't know her, but like her presentation charmed me. She basically said that this book was the first book that she read where she really felt like literature could change a person's life. And when she said that, I was like, like you got me, you've charmed me, you have my attention. Do I know what this book is about? No, I don't. I'm assuming it's bleak. I'm assuming it's about a house. I do kind of remember that she said that the book is told in all of these different perspectives and we're tying together all of these different people and their lives in this one epic sweeping storyline, but that didn't really tell me anything then and it's not really telling you anything now. I don't care, I still wanna read it. The next one I have here is Cujo and this is by Stephen King. Now, technically, I don't actually care if I read Cujo. No offense, Cujo, I'm sure you're a very good boy. Cujo is about a dog and the dog like terrorizes people. I could take that story or leave it. Really what I'm trying to say here is I want to read something from Stephen King before I die. He has influenced pop culture and media so much from his works. I feel like most readers, like most avid readers, especially if you're interested in like thrillers and horror, have loved and read multiple works from Stephen King. And you know what, before I die, I would just really, really like to read something from him. Plus, this was my grandma's favorite author. My grandma was like a really, really tough lady and she just had a lot of life in her and she loved Stephen King's works. And I kind of wanna read this and like connect to her through that. I really miss my grandma. She's passed away now for um, a long time. And I think about her and whenever I pick up a Stephen King book, I actually think about my grandma. So it would be really, really nice to read this and to see what her favorite author's work was like. But also, I don't know, just to experience Stephen King for the first time for myself. I picked up Cujo because I feel like it's like the least intimidating of his work, but uh, yeah, I just wanna read something from him. Okay, next up, I'm gonna be a little cliche and I'm gonna say I wanna read everything from William Shakespeare. Or like, not everything. <laughs> because that guy wrote a lot, but like his main works. The only things that I've really read from Shakespeare are A Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet, and also Romeo and Juliet. But I want to read like all of his main things. I want to read Othello, As You Like It, Macbeth, Julius Caesar. The, I'm just reading these titles. But I want to read all of the books in this stack. And actually, for several years now, I always say it's a goal that I want to read one play a month. And then somehow throughout the year, I feel forget about that goal, but I still really, really want to do that. I would love to pick up one of his works every single month and read it and then like watch an adaptation for it. For example, how fun would it be to read Hamlet and then watch The Lion King? You know, like that is a whole night. We love The Lion King. Also, if you didn't know, The Lion King was in fact based on Hamlet and The Lion King too is loosely based off of Romeo and Juliet. And I had the biggest crush on Kovu when I was a kid. Like I cannot even tell you. Deception. Disgrace. So. The next book I have is Chunky, and that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. And like, I mean, I don't blame myself for putting this book off. How long is this thing? It's, oh my gosh, it's longer than I thought actually. It's 1,462 pages, like, Wow. So this book, The Count of Monte Cristo, is about a guy named Edmund Dantes. And this guy was sent to a prison um, for a crime that he didn't commit. And while he's there, he like hatches this revenge plan to like get even with everyone who's tried to destroy his life. And it's just about him. And like, doesn't that sound great? I love the movie. I know the movie and the book are very different. And also please don't tell me the ending of this. The next book I have is a book that I have wanted to read for such a long time. This is actually 
my brother's favorite series or like it was one of his favorite series growing up and that is The Lord of the Rings and this is by J.R.R. Tolkien. I loved The Hobbit, okay? Like I was a Hobbit queen stan. I wanted to be like Bilbo Baggins. I wanted to live in a little Hobbit hole and be a cottagecore queen when I was like 12. But then I saw this and I was like, I'll just stick with The Hobbit. This is technically a bind up of three different books. I kind of wanted it in one giant book just because it's so floppy. And like the floppiness of this book genuinely brings me so much joy, I can't even tell you. So I feel like because this series is so popular in pop culture, most people kind of know what this is about. But basically it's about Frodo who needs to return this like evil ring basically, or like I think he has to destroy it because somebody bad is trying to get at the ring. I haven't seen the movies, you guys. I don't, I don't know. But I am very excited to read this. I'm actually thinking about vlogging my experience reading this for the first time. It sounds fun, you know? The next book is a book that is so popular in pop culture, but only in like reading circles. Um, it's not popular because it's been like made into a movie or anything, but everyone I feel has heard of this book at least, and that is House of Leaves, and this is by Mark Z. Daniel Lewski. Now, I'm really nervous putting this book on this list because I don't know if this is going to be too scary for me to read and enjoy. So the caveat to this is that I would like to try reading this, but if I pick it up and it's too scary, like I will not be bothered if I don't finish it. The book itself is about a family who moves into a house, and the house looks different on the inside than it does on the outside. So inside the house, I think it's like quite a bit longer and like bigger and I think there's like weird things that happen in the house I don't really know. I've heard that it's terrifying I've heard that this entire thing is actually told in like very different formats and also that we're following different storylines We're following a family who is living in this house We're following the recorded history of the family from somebody else who's researching the house And then we're following somebody who has found all of these findings and somehow how all of these different perspectives are telling us the story of this creepy house. And you know what? I love like haunted house stories. I don't know if that's exactly what this is, but I really like it when like houses have their own personality in books. So yeah, I'm excited to try reading this. It is adult horror and my scare factor is that of a middle graders. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, next up, let's talk a little bit about some fantasy. I am dying to get to A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is my favorite series of all time. Like not, not the book, obviously. I haven't read the book. But as far as like television series, favorite of all time. The eighth season does not exist in my mind. But that's actually one of the reasons why I want to read the series. I wanna see how the author himself wants to end his series. Game of Thrones is following all of these different families back in this fantasy world. And every single family kind of wants power. And it's essentially like a game of chess, but with people. It's so fascinating. It's very, very dark, and I wanna read every single book in this series. Next up, before I die, I also want to finish the Mistborn series. So I've read the first book, but I want to read both of these books, and I'm actually not as intimidated by these books, and the reason is because Mistborn was just as chunky, but like I was so completely in love with the story that I did not even notice the length. Like it flew by. So I really, really wanna finish the series. A book one, I won't tell you what these are about because I don't know, I don't wanna spoil anything, but book one is following Vin, our main character, and Vin has like this ability and she calls the ability luck. She can essentially like have a little bit of an influence over people's emotions. And one day she is spotted by this thief called Kelsier who, kind of tells her that he wants her to complete his band of thieves and they're trying to pull a heist on the Dark Lord. I have to read these two books before I kick the bucket. And next up is a book that I'm actually planning on reading extremely soon, and that is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. But I really, really wanted to put this on the list because this is a book that I've wanted to read for years, and it's definitely a book that I need to read before I die, like if at all possible. So this particular book is following a family who lives 
in this mythical little city. The book itself is following all of the different generations of the family and what they have to face. I think this book touches on different wars, on colonialism, on a lot of big tragedies that happen to this family, but it's about this family's resilience to all of these horrible things that are happening to them. And it has a lot of magical realism in it. So I'm really, really, really excited. I love magical realism so much. I've been wanting to read this book for forever. Um, yes, so this is probably like the top of my bucket list, if I'm being honest. The next book I'd really, really like to read before I kick the bucket is going to be Paradise Lost, and this is by John Milton. This is an epic poem and it's following the fall of Satan. And if you know anything about me, I just love books that kind of delve really deeply into like mythology and lore and religion. I think it's really, really fascinating. And this is a book that has been quoted in so many really, really important TV shows and novels and stories. That's all I know about this book though. Next up, I really, really want to read The Iliad and The Odyssey Before I Die, mostly because I love Greek mythology so much and it would be such a shame if I died before actually reading these epic classics. The Iliad is following the last, I think like few years, of the Battle of Troy, and we're really seeing like how Achilles is kind of finishing off the battle and all of the repercussions of like who wins and who loses. And then the Odyssey is all about Odysseus's journey home from Troy after everything is done. I'm gonna be honest with you, Madeline Miller has had a huge impact on my love of Greek mythology in recent years. And I just, I really wanna read these and kind of see like the origin stories for what really inspired her to write Song of Achilles and also Cersei. The next book I really, really want to read before I is going to be Rebecca, and this is by Daphne du Maurier. Again, this is a book that is really, really discussed in so many different like literary circles, but also in so much pop culture. This is about our unnamed protagonist who marries a man who she meets like on vacation. And when they go back to his house, she learns all about his first wife, whose name was Rebecca. And it seems like no matter what she does, she can't get the house and the staff to stop comparing her to Rebecca and she almost feels haunted by this woman's presence. But when I say like she's being haunted by this woman's presence, what I mean is that this woman's presence is clinging to everything and making it impossible for this new unnamed protagonist to feel at home. I'm just, I'm interested. The next stack of books I have here is, I'm gonna say arguably the sexiest stack of books I have. And that's because we're talking about creepy gothic literature and it's a moment. So here are all of the books in the creepy gothic literature genre that I would like to read before I die. One of my favorite genres of all time. I always say that if I would go back and get like a master's in literature specifically or a PhD, I would want it to be in gothic lit. And the picture of Dorian Gray, flawless. We absolutely stand. So the first book in this stack is to no one's surprise going to be Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is a book that I have tried to read before, but I'm going to be honest with you. The first couple of pages of this are actually really difficult to get into, but I still really, really want to read it. It's all about a doctor who really, really wants to learn to create life. And in doing so, he creates the creature and the creature then kind of is villainized as this horrible monster. The reason I wanna read this though is because Mary Shelley is such an important part of the science fiction genre. And I love that this is kind of like one of the first books ever in that genre. And I just feel like it deserves to be read and appreciated and even studied a little bit. I'm very excited to hopefully read this before I die. Next up, we have The Greatest Cases of Sherlock Holmes. Benedict Cumberbatch had a chokehold on me in Sherlock. And I really, really wanna read this series because it has had had such a huge impact on our pop culture. There have been so many movies and television series and books based on the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And I would love to read the originals and kind of understand where everything stemmed from. So this book is a bind up of several of the greatest cases of Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is a detective who worked on kind of like impossible cases. He was considered kind of like a genius and that's all I know about this. Next up we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This particular book is 
everywhere in pop culture. I know the ending because again, I feel like this is where we get so many of like our literary puns and memes from this particular book and the ending. Also, it's referenced quite a bit in Taylor Swift's music, which I think is so funny. The book itself is about Jane Eyre, who is a person who I think is an orphan. And when she grows up, she is sent to live with this mysterious man and kind of try to take care of his house. And in the process, she ends up falling in love with him. That's kind of all I know though. I mean, I do know the ending, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You know, I have a heart. Next up, we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. Who doesn't love a vampire moment? You know, the original Edward Collins. This one doesn't sparkle though. I think instead he just kills everyone. But either way, we're learning about Dracula or Count Dracula who moves to Transylvania and he ends up creating vampires. I haven't read the book, okay? I, I only know what I've seen in memes. This is why I wanna read the book though. And then rounding out the Gothic literature section is gonna be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde about a scientist whose experiment goes wrong and he morphs into a dangerous person. Also, this is not intimidating at all. I love the length of this book. It's it's beautiful. Next up before I die, I really want to read a Murakami book. I have here The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, but honestly, I just want to read anything from Haruko Murakami. I've heard incredible things about his work and he's very prolific in the Japanese magical realism genre. The only thing I really know about this is that this man ends up trying to find a missing cat and then he falls into a well and into another world. Kind of a little bit like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but I think it's going to be a, a lot different than that, yes. And then to round out this list, I have two authors that I'd really, really like to focus on and read multiple works from them before I die. The first one is F. Scott Fitzgerald. I love The Great Gatsby with my whole heart. Jay Gatsby is my forever love. And to this day, I stand by this, Daisy did not deserve him. I've reread The Great Gatsby probably five times in my life, but I have yet to read anything else by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know the specific specific summaries of these books, but I do know the specific themes. And the themes themselves all revolve around life in the 1920s, excess, drinking, privilege, classism, things like that. And I'm really, really interested just to kind of see if I like his other works as much as The Great Gatsby or if it was a one hit wonder. By the way, if you have read anything else from F. Scott Fitzgerald, uh, please let me know if you have a suggestion as to where to go next, like what book to start with. And then finally, the last two books that I'm going to discuss today are both by Leo Tolstoy and they are Anna Karenina and War and Peace. This is a book that I'm sure you can see I actually started and I was really, really enjoying this book. But I think at the time I was like trying to do vlogmas. That was a mistake. You do not attempt vlog and reading Anna Karenina. You're gonna crash and burn. Anna Karenina is following a woman named Anna Karenina who is married, but she engages in a love affair with a Russian soldier. And the book is about the repercussions of their affair and how it affects every single person around them. And then War and Peace is following a bunch of people and a war. I don't know what this book is about. It says on the flap that Tolstoy conjures a broad panorama of rich, messy, beautiful, and debased human life. We follow the fates of open-hearted, impulsive Pierre, his melancholy friend, Prince Andre, and the enchanting Natasha as history and fiction are combined in one of the wisest and most enthralling novels ever written. And what I've heard about this book from everyone who has read this is that it is life-changing, is that it's hard to get through, but once you get through it, you don't regret it. And I feel like that alone would make anyone want to read it. Plus, I feel like it's such an accomplishment to say, yeah, I've read War and Peace. And I think you guys, that is it. Now, technically, I have so many more books that I actually want to read before I die, but this is gonna be the first round of books. If you would like me to make another video all about books that I would like to read before I die, just let me know down below and I can always do that in the future. By the way, a huge thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Please check them out down below. My code and my link is down below and I highly, highly recommend their service. I love Book of the Month so much and I always 
always love their selections. But before we go, I would love to hear from you guys. What is your number one book that you want to read before you die? Please let me know down below in a comment. And have you read any of these books? Do you agree with the fact that I should read them before I die? Or do you think some of these books are a little overhyped? And finally, if you have made it to this point of the video, please leave me the skull emoji. I feel like it's like only fitting, you know? That is it for now though, you guys. I love you guys so much. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you on